back. If we don't have any friends left on the surface, then we need to find an enemy. seen this crash in Skylanders and truthfully I think he looks cool no! I think he looks cool we must find a way to cleanse this poor tainted icon from my childhood past or at least do another shitty review about something because hashtag originality crash of the Titans and crash mind over mutants a two-for-one special I mean it's a two-parter Two for two, I guess. Uh, you get what you pay for, you don't pay anything for this, so this is... You get what you pay for. Crash of the Titans being the first game from Radical Entertainment. You could say Crash Tag Team Racing was the first game by Radical Entertainment, but that's too close of them staying too close to everything else that is Crash Bandicoot to involve it with these diarrhea stains of an icon destroying masterpiece. Dished out in the year of 2007, also known as the greatest year of gaming. Ugh. Gross. In which I had purchased Clash of Titans on the Wii because I'm an idiot. One of the four games I had on the Wii because they're so fucking expensive. Also released on PS2, Xbox 360, original Xbox, PSP, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS. No PS3 port though, you missed that one, huh? Fans rejoiced as they saw a new Crash Bandicoot game. Holy crap, a new Crash Bandicoot game! Twin Sanity was only three years ago. I mean, we all wanted it. We all needed a new Crash game. And we were led to an out of date titled pun. But goal, they made a new Clash of the Titans. Yeah, in 2010, this game came out three years before that. The original Clash of the Titans came out in 1981. Now oh, we all saw that coming. Boy oh, am I ever so silly. Of course you'd name it something so obscure that has nothing to do with the fucking game! Mind of the Mutants at least has a clever title that tells you a little bit about the game. Also, if you want a proper explanation about Crash Bandicoot and all that shit, watch that game yo about Crash Twin Sanity. Clash of the Titans. Yeah, but Titans. Fuck off. We start the original game off with the puppet show where they knock out the original storyline of how Crash had been created by Neo Cortex. Immediately you're off to a super bad start. Well done. Do you remember Nino Cortex and Neo Cortex when he shot a fruit to make a bipedal furry icon of 1996? <laughs> Me too! They shoot things to make them monsters or mutants or titans and tell them so you can find a Crash Bandicoot. Just like in no other Crash Bandicoot game ever. Episode 1. A new hop. I have many questions here. First off, that was the Grim Reaper from Billy and Mandy. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, I'll take it. Secondly, was that an unnecessary Star Wars pun? Who's hopping? I see no fucking buddies here. Who was that? Crash! Help me get this gizmo working! That's Crash Bandicoot? What the fuck? That's Coco? That's Crunch? And who do, who do we have here? Who is this? Who is this? That's Aku! Aku? <laughs> I can't do it! I can't do it! It's killing too many things at once for me. You think I can carry on with this? You gotta do it. It's in the contract. Uh, 
Crash is voiced by Giant Gremlins from the Scooby-Doo movie, aka Ye Wacko Warner. Coco is Jimmy Neutron, Crunch is Mr. T. Make a sucker! What the fuck? He doesn't even look like Mr. T, I don't get the connection. And the Grim Reaper we heard before, that's... that's Aku Aku. Oh, fighting evil for many centuries. <laughs> <That's Aku -Aku. laughs> Can we please make a solid rule not to make Crash Bandicoot talk ever again? Just like Gandhi looking in the flames of hell, let's look at gameplay! It's okay, honestly. <laughs> Probably the only possible thing about this game, Crash is bendy and flexy like a 3D animated Looney Tune short, but it doesn't give the impact that it's trying very so hard to do. Instead, eh, just looks like a flimsy piece of elastic. Oh, and Crash can punch! Just like in no other Crash Bandicoot game ever! Just like the entirety of these both two games, to be honest. They have nothing to do with Crash Bandicoot apart from having the same names. I wouldn't say character, cause this doesn't look anything like this. And this definitely doesn't look anything like this or this. You can use your spin around attack by shaking the Wii remote around and if your mum walks in playing it, she definitely thinks you're a furry. So stop sending me links to cheap mascot suits, thanks mum. They took out Wampa Fruit as a thing you collect to collect lives and then put in Mojo. Mojo? Mojo. Just like in no other Crash Bandicoot game ever! Because if you want to give a Bandicoot a cultural appropriative tribal tattoo, you gotta make him collect magic juju click click jumble wumba shit. Wumpa fruit is used as health and... No sir, don't like it! Too much change! The environments want you to believe that this is open world, but there is only one way to go! The path they are giving you is wide. It's like they saw the freedom from Twin Sanity and started to make it like that, but turned around and were like, you know what, this isn't anything like the originals. Let's start making it like the originals. Why would you start making it like the originals now? If you put this miscreation in an island like this and have random combinated segments and wide arena-esque locations, why make it so bland to the point where you can't explore? And why do trees have happy faces? This isn't fucking Disneyland. This is making this look like this. Games like this are supposed to make you feel like exploring. They make you want to find little secrets in every cranny you look into, not hold your hand and force you where to go. The first three did a genius thing of allowing the player to walk in a specific route and allow the player to still explore every inch of secrets. Twin Sanity gave the player full freedom to find secrets on their own without the game telling them where they are and what to do. People call this open world, this is not open world. Calling this open world is like calling a gas chamber off route sand dune surfing. They crafted it so finely so every player has the same fucking experience and fairness so the dumb kids can feel as good as the actual people who like playing games and are good at games. And the fact that they made this a collectathon based around this one path fucking world is stupid. Baby want some lollies? Baby has a whole fucking factory! There's no challenge in collecting them and there's for hell not a shortage in collecting these clumps of last Sunday night's bukkake cum bucket. Also the combat being a cardboard cutout Hey, let's give this original character with his original tech and, and make him the most generic battle system ever. Just like in no other Crash Bandicoot game ever. A combo system with punches is Trash Bandicoot. Vagina. <laughs> you can also control these big mutants or titans or whatever the f Fuck, you want to call them depending on the consistency of your own fucking franchise. You knock them out with a bunch of punches and slap on Aku Aku's mask on their faces once they're KO'd to control them. Each beast has unique abilities so you can turn this puzzling platformer into a mindless brawl and drag through this dead corpse of a franchise along. Where's the challenge? Where's the thrill? Where's the drive? Where's the fucking story integration with the actual game? This is a long convoluted beaten up brawl that makes you believe that it's a 3D platformer but all you're really doing is walking two steps to fight another mutant to control to beat up more mutants so you can control them. That's the whole game. That's the whole game. That's the whole game. Walk, brawl, jump on a mutant. 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 Most of the mutants even fucking look the same but just with a different skin slapped onto them. I don't fucking know, man. I don't get why the game is based around them. 
is because Crash had a lot of original mutant enemies around originally and thought ab an abundance of just generic <laughs> would be good. It limits the creativity and originality of the original enemies. The originals had enemies like Pinstripe, which contrasted amazingly against Ripperoo. Yeah, Dingo Dial, Koalicon, weird fucking ape dude from Crash Bash, and literally nothing else. Which each had their own personality and style and the way you'd defeat them. This is a punch punch jump! This isn't fun! Even the bosses are like that! The. Phew. Like Tiny Tiger and Crash Warped was amazing. He was this big, macho, scary tiger. He would creep up in between levels to tell you he's gonna destroy you and. Well, you're like scared, but at the same time, you're like You suck, go suck a dick and a banana, cause that is all you are But on this one, he's Stop! No more, please! You're just too stupendous and fantabulous! Honestly, you're just awesome! He's Mike Tyson. He's Mike... He's Mike Tyson. Uh-huh. I'll tell you where to go! Hmm. Life doesn't mean nothing but a bag of potato chips, uh, coke. <laughs> He's Mike fucking Tyson! I'll fuck you till you love me, faggot! He's a real ass looking guy in a fursuit with a pitiful Mike Tyson little... Mike Tyson... Why? 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 I don't... What does Mr. T and Mike Tyson have to do with Crash Bandicoot? What the f... How is that? How is that? How? It's one thing to change how a character looks, but to change how a character acts and flip it upside down and this fucking disgusting tripled shit. I just don't Am I grumpy because I missed the joke? Am I grumpy because I don't like change? Am I grumpy that there's a sequel? Am I grumpy that I have to fail to enthrall you enough to stick around for a mind over mutants? Will Felicia ever be asked out to prom by Brad? Find out next time on Game Groups.